hi guys, good morning, my name is Naor. I'm running creative campaigns for over uh, 15 years in various advertising agencies in Israel. In the last three years, I'm working at Platica as a creative director in marketing unit. Hi, my name is Rotem. Uh, I've been working at Platica for the past eight years, and I'm on the performance side of our uh, marketing activities. Okay, so today we're going to share our story about creative performance and hopefully give you some tips about how to do creative performance without losing your nerves. But seriously, Rotem, we are fooling. We lost it completely. We can probably tell you more about how to lose your nerves without doing creative performance. Okay, so before we dive in to get a full story, we'll have to start with a short intro about Platica. I'm sure many of you have heard about Platica. It's an impressive organization with crazy growth over the years. But actually, it all started 13 years ago. And by now, I'm sure many of you are well aware of our products. <clears throat> Brands. Brands. Yeah, correct. Uh, and the thing about Platica is that we're talking about scale. We're talking about massive amounts of data. And obviously, it all translates to big budgets as well. And in order to support those budgets, we are running over 100 sources and counting, and we have a very diversified portfolio. And every media type needs a different creative uh, attention. Yeah, so that is basically the reason why we need to deliver over 700 creative assets per month. That's a huge amount of assets. And our range of creative production is spread on very wide spectrum of creative needs. And basically, we are doing it all in-house. Starting from big and complicated uh, production features, starting starring A-list uh, talents, and, uh, and broadcast on the most uh, popular uh, TV channels on US, all the way to pure performance-driven banners for DSP channels that are running at scale. And this entire operation is running by amazing 120 marketeers. This is the entire marketing unit. On the performance marketing, we have 40 people dedicated for performance. We're talking about UA, retargeting, and growth performance team. While on the creative side, we have uh, creative artists, producers, and obviously creative managers. Now, for us as managers, one of the challenge was to create and establish a workflow that will support this massive operation. We have multiple games, multiple teams, uh, tasks, sources, campaigns. It wasn't that hard to get on someone's nerves just by doing that. So, before we're going to start telling you how we utterly failed, uh, we want to start with a short survey, okay, that will help you clarify which side are you on? So, guys, if you're ready, we're going to show you random words, okay? We, we, and we ask you to choose only three words, okay? That describe yourself. Please try to choose. I know that it's hard. Some of you think you are a bit of all or none of the above, but, but it's not black and white. So, for the sake of the test, please try to choose three words. So. You got it? Okay, now reach under your seat, you find the pedal sign with red and blue. Okay, spot those words and get ready, here comes the magic. Okay, now spot the words that you've chosen, are you red or are you blue? Raise the pedal sign up high. <laughs> Come on, choose something. <laughs> Rotem, yours is over there. Well, all the red people make some noise, yeah! Uh, sorry, I think I beat you this time. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the number one lesson we learned throughout the process is that people truly different. Okay, we operate based on the unique and individual operational system. And understanding what motivates us can help us achieve our goals without losing our nerves. Now, this basic understanding is relevant every step of the way. Simply by taking a look at our offices or setup is a good enough indication to see the difference and how we operate differently. On the left, you can see my office, and on the right, you can see Naor's office, and? And so my office is full of colors, is loud, messy, full of details and toys, and two words, organized chaos. 
My office is much more systematic, organized, practical. I have everything I need at reach and with minimal distractions. Even the fact that the left window shade is not at the same level as the other two bothers me. And this is exactly why I'm blue. So those differences are not only... <coughs> oh, oh, sorry. So those differences are not only expressions of our office preferences. It has a huge impact on the set of skills we are looking for when we hire new employees. So therefore, it's only natural these gaps will rise on our day-to-day -day activity. So just to give you a context of what we are talking when we say gaps, we're going to give you a sneak peek to our day in a life in marketing unit. Here we go. <laughs> Look, it looks nice, but I don't think it's going to work. Autumn, just because you're running the media, it doesn't mean you know what works and what doesn't. Okay, and you know better because you've done some TV campaigns. Seriously, you think it's a good indicator for performance? At least give it a try, you know? Try to, to upload it and see what happened. Okay, we let the number decide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this snapshot is only a tip of the iceberg of the, our, core, our core conflict. These gaps are evident for the most basic truth we owe about our job, what we actually do. Even by the way we are referring to the games, is it brand or is it product, is a real deal for us. For someone else, it might sound like tomato, tomato. But for us, it's what we are waking up in the morning for. Okay, so now we're going to show you some of those core conflicts. And we're going to start with... Brand versus product. <laughs> yeah. So take a look of Bingo Bleach campaign, for example. Bingo also in French? Mais oui. So, bingo is bingo everywhere. You know you make me want to shout everywhere. Bingo! Bingo! Shout it on your bingo! In the east it's bingo! Bingo! Let's play now! Come on, get that bingo through! Let's all together shout! Yeah, 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 yeah! Bingo Blitz! Take a trip with Blitz! Bingo Blitz! Get that bingo! Millions of players have already discovered a world of excitement with Bingo Blitz. Download now, it's free. Bingo Blitz. So if we refer the game as brand, we don't expect to see the outcome of our brand effort in the near future. Our goal of building brand is that we believe that we will make Bingo Blitz the most dominant bingo in five to 10 years. And that statement is a legitimate reason why we spend millions of dollars on brand activity. Today, after th three years, I can tell you that one out of three Americans familiar with Bingo Blitz, and that statement is translated directly to our performance activity. Okay, so this is the brand version. On my end, I look at Bingo Blitz as a product. I want to maximize its revenue potential and return my investment as fast as possible. In Petica, we have a very clear way uh, to determine what's the optimal uh, budget per product, and we call it the payback period. So this is a graph that's showing ROI over time, and the black trend lines indicates what happens if I will spend my entire budget on performance activity. Obviously, I would return my investment faster than if I would invest it in the red trend line, which is showing a mix of brand awareness and performance campaigns. Now, this is just one example of the tension that we are dealing on a daily basis, uh, but it also affects the strategy and how we do marketing in general. So, moving on, we have... Next battle is player versus users. Okay, so, on one hand, there is a side that it's all about the players, the persona. We want to define what motivates our core players, and by knowing everything about them, I can understand what drives them, how to excite them. And basically that's what motivates me when I draft a brief for the next creative production. Okay, these are the persona, sorry. Um, I totally understand the persona aspect and our users are much more than plain users. But end of day, when we're running performance campaigns, we look at data and user behavior. We analyze their uh, results, and this is how we determine what will be the quality criteria we want to meet. 
And let's say a group of users is meeting that quality criteria, but doesn't fall under the classic definition of their persona, me personally, I would still try to go and maximize this opportunity as long as they keep playing and playing and playing and playing and playing. Okay. <laughs> Next battle is motivations versus conversion. Okay, so creative people will always look for the reason why, crea why specific creative work. We try to unlock the trigger that led to emotion, to motivations. While on the other hand, performance people would look at the data, will see that something is be the benchmark, will be enough for them to immediately ask for three more iterations while the iron is still hot. Okay, an example for that specific gap is... What by, make sorry, by showing you one of our top referring motivations video, we call it All the Reasons You Want to Play Slotomania. What makes Slotomania the number one free slots game? It's the perfect me time game that allows you to unwind. Being able to meet new friends from around the world. The dozens of possibilities to receive free gifts throughout your day. These are what makes Slotomania the number one free slots game in the world. Download now to receive one million coins and a free piggy. Slotomania, what will today spin? What makes... Okay, so it's an amazing production, I must say. But showing alternately, alternatively a simple gameplay that doesn't even show features that are really in the game is bringing me better conversions and better performance results, I would still choose it over the motivations video. But the motivation video uh, works. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next battle is concept versus, uh, versus iterations. So artists are creative people that by default will, will try to challenge the structures. I want to uh, uh, express my feeling of the creative in order to deliver the message to the player. Uh, so for me, I always try to challenge the existence and to bring a fresh approach to our uh, creative portfolio as no as new concept. I will take the top performing asset, I will define the kick that makes it work and I will just iterate it over and over until I beat the benchmark. Now, here on the left, you can see one of our top performing concept. We call it variety because it's showing different moments or machines in the gameplay. And uh, it's working pretty great for us. So when I look at it, the first thing I think about is I go to Noor and say, please uh, give me three more versions of it and use different moments or machine in the game. When Noor is looking at the same video, he's trying to analyze what actually make it work. He's trying to translate it to a new concept and he figured out it could be something interesting to test it just like uh, on Netflix you choose your content. So he made a Netflix version for Scissor Slots. And this is the outcome. And again, it worked great. Good job. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so our uh, next battle will be story versus gameplay. So I want to deliver a message that by using the brand language, I will tell a story. I will try to tick the player emotions in order to make him do the action itself. So take, ex take a look on the example of WSO. This is where a legend was born, where Stan the Man would risk it all for a chance at a WSOP bracelet. His odds were slim to none, but that didn't stop Stan the Man. Not a bad flop. Bet 150. Not a cold turn. Bet 250. Not even when the river left him dead in the water. All in. Stan the man turned nothing into greatness, like the legend he is. For this isn't a diner, it's a royal dining hall made for a legend. And tonight, he feasts on his opponent's chips. Become a legend in the official WSOP free poker app. Download for free now. So the, the story of, of beating the table with a hero call hand can help you to deliver the, the excitement and the poker thrill that we have on WSOP app. While on the other hand, showing gameplay can, can reach the performance KPI but without the emotional hook and without the brand values. 
with all the respect to the emotional hook, I want to cut to the chase. I want to show the best representation of what the users will meet once they open the app, which is the gameplay. And seriously, if someone is looking to play poker, let's show him poker, which is the gameplay. <laughs> okay, so bottom line, Rotem. Let's face it, we didn't talk. Okay, we couldn't find even a mutual language that will help us overcome the ultimate gap of creative versus performance, okay? We even used to call it sides, okay? So today, we understand the value of each side. And just before we hit rock bottom, we decided we're turning the verses into end. And we went to therapy. Just like a couple therapy, but with my work wife. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I learned, uh, sorry, so these gaps are help us to understand what motivate Rotem and how she different and what is her op uh, operational system. Now remember the colors that you've got, now it's the time for self-reflection, so all the red people, here is your time. Yeah. So I learned how Noor looks both on a good day and on a bad day. On a good day, Noor is sociable, dynamic, enthusiastic, persuasive, and energetic. While on a bad day, you don't want to miss this guy. He's emotional, disorganized, loud, unstable, impulsive, and simply put, impossible. Impossible, that's my middle name. <laughs> so I learned about Rotem that she could be, she could be on a good day uh, she could be calculated, precise, questioning, and cautious. However, however, on the bad day, she could be reserved, suspicious, and indecisive. <laughs> so we realize we have to create a unified version of us that will help us bridge the gaps and make the whole greater than the sum of its parts. We recognize that our job was to bridge between the two sides of the brain. If we can only be good ambassadors for each other's sides, then the rest will follow. Okay, so we've passed the hardest part of this presentation. Now we're going to show you some positive takeaways of what we actually learned and how did we make it work together. 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 <laughs> okay, so the first takeaway. So the first, the first takeaway is that we have to acknowledge the complexity of the routine and process that we have. They both involve many stakeholders, interfaces, deadlines. So to keep everything in the flow, we have to set expectations of each part of the process and we defined a clear methodology. So for me, although I'm red, it is a must to plan the creative process in order to avoid all the gray areas when responsibilities are not clear. So I know for some of you it's look like a maze, but for us it makes sense because it's all, it holds all the stages from business need to ideations, all the way through production and testing and digging the insight from the data. Okay, so the next takeaway is about the refinement of our business need. We wanted to make sure we place our efforts where we think we have the most impact. And we also, we wanted a better balance of quality over quantity. So we needed to connect between the demand from the performance side to ideas based on results from the creative side. And just by looking at this pie chart, it shows you how easy it is to get lost in the execution phase and just doing 700 plus creative per month without knowing where you're going. And we wanted to create a, a more transparent approach so we can see, we can invest our resources where we think we have the most value. Okay, sorry, here's the build up. Now the next one is pretty surprising, so here it comes. We gave up testing. We realized that creative testing can be measured by A-B test alone, and we needed something more sustainable that will help us identify what will work in future on a performance at scale. So in order to show you the differences, I'm going to show you what we did before and after. So before, let's say I'm managing Soiter Grand Harvest, and now he's giving me four new creatives to test. I load it to the clean test environment, and these are the four colors you can see on the left side, and I give it a week for a clean testing. 
Then after a week, I found out that the blue and green one are beating the benchmark, and I upload the, the top performing creatives to the ongoing activity. Now, this is a positive outcome, where the blue one is actually winning in the test environment and gaining scale and building up the momentum. But on the other end, we could have ended up just in the same place where something is winning in the test environment, but nothing happens on the ongoing activity. So we thought about how we can make this process a little bit more efficient, and we realized we can just skip the test part. And this is what we're doing today. Today, I'm getting the same four new creatives from Nor, and what I do is I upload it all to the ongoing activity. And just like in nature, the survival of the fittest, if something will work, it will work at scale and on the, on on the clean testing environment. On the other end, we're giving more opportunities to creatives that didn't prove themselves on the clean test environment, and maybe they will catch up on the ongoing activity. So overall, I think we are more efficient and maybe more focused on what is working at the end goal and not on the way. So the first, the first takeaway is about focus. We realize we spend more time on why things doesn't work, and it was frustrating. Okay, it, ev it, even, uh, it wasn't help us even to nail the next top creative. So we shift our, f naturally, 80% of the performance uh, creative uh, results end out unsuccessful. So we shift our mind to the 20% that work, and by focusing on iterations, localizations, and adjustment, we can improve our top performing assets. Okay, so for example, here you can see the core. So we saw on the, the left video, was the winner and lead the chart. So we decide to create different iterations. Small and simple changes to see if we can beat the original. Iterations could be really small, small changing, like change the, the, changing the character, color, or even speed up the tempo, or adding a head, headline. All of these, all of these simple changes can help us to iterate and learn it in a minimal investment. Okay, so moving on to the final takeaway. This one is about closing the loop of our creative performance process. We realized we have to give the artist, no team, uh, the results of the uh, performance of the new creative. We also realized that sometimes having too much data equals no data, especially for people who doesn't do well with numbers, like this guy. Uh, we also realized that having no data at all is like shooting with your eyes covered. So we must have some solution for that. And this is why we came up to, uh, together with our uh, product marketing team. Uh, we created a dashboard that is making the performance creative data much more uh, simplified and accessible for everyone in the marketing unit. This simple step that took us more than two years to be honest uh, is uh, helping us to share our successes and duplicate across product, which is something we didn't do that well before, and I think that now we're a little bit better. Now we are on the track, yeah. <laughs> so, bottom line, we can keep fine-tuning on how we do creative performance, but the truth is, it, this will always be a working process. So we have to keep flexible mindset and, quest and keep questioning ourselves uh, uh, what is our methodology and results to stay ahead of the curve. So some challenges we are facing these days are, are we positioned on the right, st uh, the right structure? Uh, did we find the mutual path, the mutual language? Are we aiming to achieve the same goal, Rotem? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so we know, as Noah said, we're still fine-tuning the process to make it perfect. And we're using healthy communication and mutual effort to make it work at least until AI will replace us all, and maybe next year we'll be standing here talking about how to do amazing creative performance without nerves at all. So stay tuned for Israeli Israel Mobile, Mobile Summit, Summit 2024. 2024. Thank you.